Rob, what is our third main topic today? John, our third main topic comes to us from Vincent Marcello. Greetings, guys. I absolutely love the show. It's being reported by Empire that Namor actor Tena Huerta has confirmed that his character is indeed a mutant. This would be the second character in the MCU confirmed to be a mutant. Do you think there's a chance that his mutantness is going to play a major factor in the movie or just a passing bit of info like in Miss Marvel? Thanks for all you do. All right. Thanks a lot for saying that in, man. And yeah, listen, I am very excited about what we're going to see in uh, Namor. I, I've seen some Namor footage. And I'm very excited about Huerta is going to bring to this role. So one of the big questions has been ever since the end of Ms. Marvel, when she goes, he says, it's some kind of mutation. And then you hear that guitar riff. <laughs> like, okay, confirmed mutant. Great. When are we going to see our next mutant? When are we going to get mutants brought to the forefront? Well, according to a lot of reports coming from an, uh, uh, an interview that he did in Empire Magazine, they're saying that Huerta has confirmed that Namor is a mutant. But has he? Anyway, this comes from the folks over at Empire. They wrote the following. Namor will be played here by Mexican actor Tino Huerta, previously seen in The Forever Purge and Tigers Are Not Afraid. With this incarnation of the character inspired by the culture and history of Mesoamerica, you can take Atlantis from Greek myth or you can adapt from a real culture, argues Huerta. Rather than just the ruler of Atlantis on the screen, he's the ruler of Talocan. And he's drawn to the surface by the ramifications of T'Challa's decision in Black Panther's final reel to reveal the truth of Wakanda to the world. That decision puts Talocan in jeopardy, Huerta explains, and Talocan has to take action to protect themselves. One detail that is carrying over from the comics, according to Huerta, his name or is indeed a mutant. Okay, so before we go into what the ramifications of this are, I do just want to point this out. Unlike all the other things where they quoted him, where we see what he was saying and they quoted him, I looked everywhere. There's no quote anywhere of Huerta saying, I, that Namor, by the way, the character I'm playing Namor is indeed a mutant in the classic understanding of mutants. It's just that the article writer says Huerta said that he's a mutant. Now, Again, I, I'm just putting a little bit of an asterisk on this saying this might be one of those situations where maybe the interviewer asked him, hey, is he, is he a mutant? And maybe goes, sure. I, I mean, we just don't know because they don't actually quote him saying it. I wanted to know what did Huerta actually say and they don't actually give us the words he used that the writer interpreted as him saying that he is a mutant. Now, look, for the, for the purposes of this conversation, we're just going to go with the assumption that that's what he did, that he said he's a mutant, even though I'm still very curious to know what he actually said, because the article doesn't give us that. But if he is actually a mutant, two things. One, will they actually reveal that in the movie itself? And then two, if they do reveal it, will it be a significant point of the film, or will it be like a throwaway fact at the end, much like it was in Ms. Marvel? I think they will mention, if he is indeed a mutant, I do think it will be mentioned in the movie itself. And I do think it has to be something important because there has to be something unique about him amongst his own people, right? There's got to be something unique about him amongst his own people. Because unless they're just going to say, oh yeah, all Talocan people are super strong, have all these powers. If they're not going to say that, then you've got to explain why is this one individual, why is Namor unique amongst his people? So at that point, maybe it comes in. Now, does Black Panther 2 become the, the true launching pad of mutants in the MCU? I don't think they're going to go that far with it. It seems like they've got a lot of other ground to cover in this movie. But again, number one, I want to hear what Huerta actually said. Number two, if he is indeed a mutant, I do think he'll get mentioned in the movie, and I do think it'll be a significant plot point, although I don't think necessarily the launching point of mutants in the MCU. Anyway, Chris, you see all this information. You saw the headlines and the reports. What do you think is the importance of the highlights of Namor truly being a mutant in this universe, and do you think it's going to play a big role in the movie? So going back to your comment before, um, off the writer, who, who could I have that conversation with them off camera? Right. Or whatever, or didn't have it on there. Um, it's very true. Another thing that could have happened is that he might have asked him inside of another comment. The other answer throughout it wasn't something he wanted to use in his interview. So he never used it in there. He's like, oh, well, I'll mention the fact that he. That sure. He yeah, it could be. 
which would be also why wouldn't you print that if he said that? Yeah. So so I I, I get I get both sides of it, but um, I do think he's going to be a mutant for sure, and I do think that one of the reasons one of the big predictions for a lot of people at D23 was that they were going to start announcing X-Men movies and everything too. And it didn't happen. And one of the reasons it didn't happen, I believe is also because they want to do it like this. They want to start peppering in mutants and saying, Ms. Marvel started it with the, with the, with the theme. Mutation. Yeah. And then there was a confirmation in black Panther Wakanda when we got anymore. And I do think, I believe the rumors about Dr. Doom. I think that's probably both, be a post credit scene. I think that he'll wind up coming in and working with Namor because that's what happened in the comics. Um, see, you proud of me? Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, I agree with you as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I think that that's most likely what's going to happen, and that's going to be the jump start. Is that going to be a major plot point? I don't know, but it's going to be it's it's going to be the 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 first shot of X Men. Rob, you're hearing this. Aside from what the interviewer did or did not hear, who are to say, like let's let's go on the assumption that he said, yeah, he's going to be a mutant. Do you think that's something that's going to be mentioned in Black Panther itself or left for us to just figure out? No. And if it is part of the movie and they mention it in the movie, does that become a significant plot point of the character himself? Well, I think there's two things going on with the idea of mutants. We have mutants in our world now, people that have different green eyes and brown eyes. You know, there there is mutation in humanity now. So the idea that people either get their superpowers from alien intervention, you're born with them, you get bit by a radioactive spider. So I think that there's ways to define, like he's a water breathing person, so he's a mutant. They haven't established that mutants are homo superior, like a new strain of humanity, like they are in, um, like they are in the comic. You know that that Magneto's like we are we are literally a superior form of 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 humankind. Homo superior is better than Homo sapiens. So I'm going to fight for my people. I think what they're what we're seeing is they're peppering in these mutants and they're building up. They're slowly going to reveal just how many mutants there are, and there's going to be a war coming, and we're going to see more and more and more of them come out. And you're going to have the rise of a character like Magneto going. There is a new strain of humanity represented by all of these people. And like you said, maybe Dr. Doom will be announced, I don't know, as a mutant himself. But I think I think he will be announced as a mutant. They're going to they're going to definitely say it, or somebody is going to say he's clearly a mutation of humanity or something. They're going to give us something. And and I think that it's part of the plan. I think that this is going to be definitely something they're leading up towards. They're slowly caressing these things in. And the reason that they use the riff from the X-Men animated series was because they wanted, in case you didn't get it, here's we're going to give you it, and it drips and drabs until it, it breaks forth mm -hmm. and it becomes a big, a big deal. By the way, one of the things that also I wanted to point out, the reason why this movie excites me so much is if he says what, what Wakanda did by revealing itself, we were another super secret, technologically advanced alien race right here on Earth. They put us in a big bad, a b bad situation. Yeah, I we want were, to know what he means by when he says uh, they like, reveal themselves hurts uh, us. I want to know what that I means. I love that. I love a geopolitical conflict between Wakanda and Talakan, a Cold War, if you will. Mm -hmm. This is what I think the MCU needs. We need a readjustment of wh where. What is the geopolitical situation? You got Celestials coming out of the ocean. You got Celestials in the sky. You've got Egyptian gods eating people's souls on the streets of Cairo. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? And no one seems to mention anything. So let's have a war between nations in the MCU. I'm bring it on. Talakan can flood Wakanda, just like in the comics. I can't wait. I want to see death, destruction, and two armies fighting. That's not against an alien presence. In invading force. All right, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? Do you think that they're actually going to mention the fact that he's a mutant in the movie? And if so, do you think that's going to be a major story point in it or just like a passing fact like they did in Ms. Marvel? Whatever you guys think about that, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. We want to take a second and thank a sponsor of this video, Stamps.com. Guys, I know it feels early, but Christmas really is right around the corner. And if you've got a lot of stuff to send to family this year, you got to start thinking ahead. And if you're a small business owner, you know how important it is to be ready for the insane holiday season. 
Stamps.com has everything you need to make your life a whole lot easier. It's the 24-7 post office that you can access from anywhere. No lines, no traffic, no hassle. Get access to the USPS and UPS services that you need to run your business right from your computer. Protect your margins with major discounts from USPS and UPS rates up to 86% off. All you need is a computer and a printer. We all know that rates are always changing, but with Stamps.com's switch and save feature, you can easily compare carriers and rates so you know that you're getting the best deal every single time. And if you're running an online store, Stamps.com works seamlessly with all the major shopping carts and marketplaces. So get ahead of the holiday season chaos this year. Get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up with the promo code CAMPIA for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts required. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code CAMPIA.